Hi everyone, it's Emmanuel here. I want to use this video to encourage some of you who are already walking a repentant, holy, and God-fearing life that pleases Jesus, and yet you still have certain doubts about your faith, I want to take this video to encourage you because I've received some messages, people are saying, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure. Uh, how's my walk with God? Even though, um, you know, I'm really living a repentant life every day before God, I ask Him to forgive me and I'm really uh, repentant and you're already walking on this narrow path and you see fruits bearing in your life. And yet some people are still doubting about, oh, is my faith genuine? And what I want to encourage you with in this video is that you need to understand, okay, the Bible says that God is a God of love. Okay, the reason that Jesus come to this earth, He says, is not to destroy people he came so that he can save okay those who are unrighteous to repentance so that they can have eternal life okay so if you have truly already come before Jesus and you've repented of your sins and you've trusted in him you uh, you've asked for God to have the blood of Jesus to wash you clean and you see that there are evident fruits in your life then I want to encourage you, don't double uh, guess yourself, don't doubt yourself because uh, to be honest, the capacity of the human mind to keep on doubting yourself is always there. But you need to uh, do what um, one of the uh, heroes of the faith, the patriarchs mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, you need to do what they do. Uh, basically, you need to have faith in God. Okay, because if you, uh, here's another danger. I mean, if you're just trusting and looking at yourself all the time, then you can be going into the danger of looking at being self-righteous. Now, that is not what we're talking about. What we are talking about uh, to be truly saved in the power of Jesus Christ is that we look to Him. We say, God, we need you, Jesus, because we have sinned against you and we need your forgiveness. And we ask that you wash us clean. And once He does that, He sends us the Holy Spirit. And if we obey Him, if we follow the conscience and the, and the convictions that He gives us, then we start to walk on this narrow path. Okay, but um, at the same time, I want to uh, encourage you guys. Remember in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, it says that Sarah, even though she was of age, okay, way past her age of childbearing, uh, yet she cling on to the promise of God, telling her that she's going to have a child. And so, and, and what does it say there? It says in Hebrews chapter, chapter 11, verse 11, it says that she, um, uh, she believed that God is able to carry out His promise that God is faithful to carry out what He promised. And so that's what you and I need to do today, okay? If you are already walking on this God-fearing, uh, uh, holy life before God, loving Jesus with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul and strength, then uh, you need to, you need to uh, look at the promises of what the Bible says uh, you have as those who are truly saints, those who are truly followers of Jesus Christ. And uh, remember, uh, here's another verse that you can be encouraged with, and that's in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. That's what Paul says. Paul says, um, For God did not appoint us to wrath, okay, but for us to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So from the beginning to the end, God's purpose and goal is to, for us, to have eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, not to have wrath. He did not appoint us to wrath. Okay, and that's why you need to remember, if you are already walking with God, remain in His promises. Renew your mind with the promises of God about who He says you are. Okay, and another thing that we can look at is in Philippians chapter 2. Starting in verse 12, uh, that's what Paul says. He says, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Now, it's important to look at this verse because uh, in verse 12, Paul says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But then the verse following in verse 13 says, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So what does that tell us? It tells us simply that uh, salvation, first of all, is a part uh, that we need to humble ourselves before God. It's a dual-way street. You see, God has already provided salvation for anyone who wants to receive it. He has already done it. It's already done on the cross. It's accomplished. It's finished. That's what Jesus said. But in order for us to receive that salvation, we got to come before God in humility and say, God, I repent. Godly sorrow which produces repentance leading to salvation. Uh, we recognize our sin before God and say, God, I pray that you change me from now on. I see the death of my sins and from now on I want to follow you. And um, you ask God to forgive you. Jesus, I pray that you forgive me. And I ask that you just help me from now on live a new life through you. And, and at that point, if you're genuine, you're repentant, you're truly genuine in your repentance and, and you really trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, that's when He sent His Holy Spirit in you. And when that happens, 
uh, if it's genuine, then uh, you see your life start to change because the Holy Spirit's first name is holy and he starts to push you on the lifestyle of living a holy life before him. Practical holiness, just like what Jesus talked about in, in the Gospels. And uh, so what, what is important to realize is that uh, Paul says it is, it is you need to, who need to work out your own salvation in fear and trembling, but afterwards it says, for it is God. Okay, who is working in you to do and to will that is of his good pleasure. So you need to remember, uh, salvation is something, uh, first of all, it cannot be done apart from God. Okay, salvation is granted by God. Like, when we come to Him in repentance, okay, He grants us eternal life. He gives it to us through faith, through His grace. At the same time, it's not just solely done by God. You see, if it's just done by God and men don't need to do anything, then everyone will go to heaven. But that's not the case. You see, that's why salvation is a two-way street. So what I'm trying to tell you is if you have already truly repented, you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're living a repentant life, you see evident changes in, in your life, then remain in the grace and the promise of God that He's given you through Scripture. And that is, for God so loved the world, okay, that um, He gave His one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him, shall not perish and have everlasting life. And that is your promise. God did not appoint you to wrath, okay, but for you to obtain eternal salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, now at the same time, even uh, with that said, I wanna, I wanna remind you, keep on following Jesus, walking on that narrow path, uh, living a life that is holy and righteous by the power of the Holy Spirit. Always submit yourself to the conviction and the voice of the Holy Spirit uh, and, and continue to follow what Jesus taught in the Scriptures and the Gospels. And if you continue doing that, then there's no need to doubt yourself. Okay, because uh, another thing is in Romans chapter 8, for those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. That's what it says. It means that it says that if you are truly the sons uh, of the living God, which is Jesus Christ, then you will see that you are led by the Spirit to mortify the deeds of the flesh, which means you're living in the Spirit. You're no longer living in the flesh. So always, as you look at your life, you see that God has changed you. You see that your heart is genuine. You're, all, you're broken before God. You always want to strive to enter through that narrow gate then you are on that right track. Don't doubt yourself. Remain in the promises of God. I want to encourage you because God did not appoint you to wrath, but for you to obtain eternal salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. So may you remain in that promise of God. May you remain in that goodness and grace of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And may you continue to walk in that God-fearing, holy, uh, loving, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ's life, loving Him. Okay, step fast till the end because if you do that, when he comes back, you'll be ready. Okay, guys? So God bless you. Remain in his grace. Remain in his promise always because Jesus Christ loves you. God bless you.